you played with Zion Williamson, and, and Mr. Wilbon, you said that this was the most important game of his career last night. He hasn't played in a playoff game. This is the big one, the stakes, and he fell significantly short, I think, of what everyone's expectations were. Um, but when you look at him and his performance, what did you make of it last night? I was disappointed, and and overall, I've been I've been disappointed in Zion this season. And and look, we can certainly point to counting stats and say he's having a fine season. Um, but you can be in the building, you can watch on TV, you can be courtside, and you can see he's not in shape. He's still not in shape despite yeah. everything that he's gone through, despite numerous conversations with legends of the game about being in shape. He gets called out on national television once or twice a year for, uh, for, uh, for this thing, this very thing. And earlier this season, he had a press conference where he was talking about trying to buy into what the team wanted. And the reality is Zion Williamson has not bought into his own career yet. And that is disappointing because as someone who is a fan of his, a former teammate, uh, a fellow Duke guy, I know, we all know, how great he can be. Yes. We've seen those flashes of greatness, but to do that for an extended period of time, to reach his full potential, and really, RJ, that's all we can ask for as players, to reach your, whatever your potential is to reach that, he's never going to get there if he doesn't buy into his own career. Well, and, and when he had that press conference, or not press conference, when it was the media a couple of months ago at the start of the season, yeah. and he was just like, Talk hey, to I'm trying to, yeah. I'm gonna, when he was saying, like, I'm just trying to buy in and blah, blah, yep. blah. I want Zion Williamson to ask himself this question. Should anybody buy into him, right? O outside of stats and numbers, should if you're looking at this and you're like, well, hey, buy, you don't buy into yourself. Well, if you don't buy into yourself, but some of it, you know, like, again, I don't know if he has said those words or th those are just the words that we are viewing. I'm viewing it from a standpoint of like, Zion, should we give you this contract? Should we buy into you? Should we build around you? T -Z Zion, tell me why we should build around you as a player and around this organization. Because I want to ask you and JJ this. I hear him say, mm -hmm. trying to buy in. Is buy is buying in, do you need to try to do that? There is no Isn't try, Isn't that only something do. when you're the best player and the most important player on your team, buy in is what you should be making everybody else You do. should be everybody, making everybody else buy in. And it's not even just the system. When he says those words, JJ, my thing is like, if, if that player was sitting across from me, I'd be like, why on earth should I buy into you, let alone you talking about buying into this? To answer your question, First, he has to buy into himself because he can't get buy-in from his teammates mm -hmm. unless he's leading by example. And you think about the juxtaposition of last night where you have LeBron James in year 21 looking <laughs> as in good a shape as he's been in his career, yep. flying around the court, taking three charges in the first half, and then you see Zion playing a low-energy game, looking out of shape, not being aggressive. Like, to me, you're not going to get buy-in from your teammates. You're not going to be able to lead and truly be the best player on a, on a championship-level team unless you're doing it first yourself. This was a wet noodle performance by the entire Pelicans team. Mm. You know, I, th I was mostly disappointed with them in the third quarter. They're down by 13 and a half. Okay, LeBron hit a bunch of long threes. He's hitting 27 footers. Okay, you're going to be behind. You come out in an elimination game in the second half and get blown out in the first two minutes in a vital moment in your season, quite frankly. Yeah. And the, the long term project that the Pelicans are working on here is that Brandon Ingram and Zion and Williamson are both sort of laid back personalities. Sure. They're inherently built that way. They are the two leaders of the team. It's been something they're trying to work on all year is getting them together, getting them to inspire each other, getting them to work together. And they've actually made some progress. But this was a huge test point. Yep. And instead, the two of them had arguably their worst game together as teammates. That is not a positive step. Well, and I think it's important to underscore what JJ said, that even though we're talking about this being the second fewest points he's had over a two-game span in his career, we're doing that from a place of rooting for him rooting for the game and he is such a significant part of the future of what we all believe the NBA the direction it's going and the youth movement there he has the potential to get there it's just that when you're you know design when we talked to uh Willie one of the things he said was disappointing about tonight was just a uh, lack of competitive spirit uh, I guess what did you see out there I agree I agree with coach said what was kind of the root of that problem in your opinion just competing. We weren't. We weren't us. We weren't competing tonight. Tim, second row, left side. Tim McMahon, ESPN. Um, you know, obviously, you. This is a unique experience for you. Haven't played in a lot of high stakes games in the NBA. What can you learn from this? 
I gotta be better. I gotta be more aggressive, finding my shot. Uh, I gotta do more things, get my team going. Uh, I think I was too laid back tonight, and I uh, just I can't do that. And defensively, I gotta be better. Let's go to the middle to Christian. Hey Zion, if these uh, if these last two games, like if you just like felt it's a it's a higher level of play, like do you feel like this is a good kind of test for for being in the playoffs? You know, when that time comes. Um, I haven't played in the playoffs, but from what I've seen so far, uh, I think it's a good. I think it was a good test. Was really when I got away from you guys and I just what you see it, in that stretch why it was so lopsided. Uh, we weren't competing. I mean, every time they got the rebound, they pushed it in transition. Whether we scored or missed, uh, they got out in transition, and uh, they played great offense. Let's go back to Will. Yeah, you mentioned uh, both sides of the court for you first uh, defensively. What did you? want to do differently from you know what you did tonight um i just gotta be more aggressive i gotta be smarter on defense um i think a lot of times i'm overthinking it and i shouldn't be doing that out there uh when you see a guy left <coughs> off you the way lebron was what do you want to do to try to attack that style of defense uh i'll be trying to get my teammates involved um but with situations like that i gotta be more aggressive it's just as simple as that. I just got to be more aggressive. Second row on the right, Jake. Jake Fisher with the Ivy Sports. Willie said that Le LeBron knows how to take advantage of these moments, and he's someone that you were obviously compared to a lot coming into the league. Do you still kind of look at him and see how he attacks moments like this for kind of like an example to how to put a franchise on his shoulders? Is that something that you're evaluating? Absolutely. Um, like I said, I was I got to be more aggressive, and he was aggressive, and his teammates saw that, and the energy carried over. So I got to just be more aggressive and get off to better starts in games. <coughs> Any other questions? Thank you. Oh, okay, go ahead. Yeah. Um, like as a former athlete, you know when you look over film and stuff, you say like I need to be more aggressive. But like, what are some ways that you are gonna try to figure out what that is for yourself? Uh, just looking to score. Uh, I have a problem where I literally tr just try to hunt the best shot possible uh, every time. But, you know, my teammates, uh, they expect more from me. Uh, I expect more from myself. And I I got to just trust my game. I just got to be more aggressive. Because uh, I think if I'm more aggressive, then that energy would definitely carry over. Thank you. Guys, have a great night. Um, Josh Giddy, he's currently being investigated by both the NBA, the league, and the Newport Beach Police uh, for an alleged improper relationship with an underage girl. I wanted to ask you where that investigation stands and why the decision was made that he could continue to play for OKC while both of those investigations were going on. I, I think if you look back, I, I, I can't think of many circumstances where we've suspended a player based on an allegation alone. And in this case, so we have an allegation, and then you have a police investigation and a parallel league investigation. I'd always also add that where there is a criminal investigation, we take a back seat. And so you have an allegation, you have an ongoing criminal investigation, that impacts how the players and the player association can work with us because of course the player needs to protect his rights. So I'm not going to say never ever, but I think this is the path we've consistently followed in the path. There's, a, there's an ongoing criminal investigation, Newport police, police opened up that investigation, notified us, we then take a back seat. And that's where things currently stand. Thank you so much, Adam, and thank you for taking a little bit of time with that's us it? here on NBA Today. You said quick. We'll make sure to get to a baseball cap next time. We thank appreciate you. it. Hey, what's up, guys? Jack from Jaggy Sports here. Let's talk about NBA in-season tournament last night. Pacers defeated the Bucks last night. LA Lakers steamrolling Pelicans last night. And Halliburton went off. Bonafide superstar in the making. LeBron James went off. Obviously a superstar already in the making. And now they play each other on Saturday night. The Bucks got their own issues with, you know, Bobby Portis calling out the coach, challenging the coach for organizational issues. You got Stephen A. Smith and J.J. Redick talking about, hey, you might need a coaching change. And then you have the Zion Williamson 
Brandon Ingram and the Pelicans issues. Now, they arguably played their worst game last night as a tandem. I think Zion had something like 11 points, if I'm not mistaken. And Ingram didn't really do too well either. Now, what was the issue here? You know, everybody, from the from the moment that game ended, everybody was on Zion. Everybody was on Zion Williamson and his weight. Because apparently, some guy who was already at the game noticed Zion was pretty much out of breath after five minutes. So now they're talking about his weight issues, his conditioning issues, how he's not doing so well, and they told him to clean up his diet, and he refuses. That's the story. That's the storyline that I'm hearing right now. You know, I thought we talked about this last year, so let's talk about it again, because apparently it keeps coming up. They're going to egg on his weight, and he was in shape. Like, he was in shape at the beginning of the season. Like, I'm not talking about preseason. I'm talking about before preseason. Before preseason, he looked damn good. Right? He cut his weight and stuff. I don't know what's going on, but, you know, he's not getting as many rebounds. He's not as effective as Shaq is saying. He's not dominating the ball. He's not wanting the ball, is what Shaq is saying. Charles Barkley saying that he's not rebounding properly. You know, he's got to have a, he's, I think he's only had a double-double twice this season, which is incredible uh, given his size. Um, you know, but at the end of the day, my question is, do the Pelicans actually trade this guy? Do they actually give up on this guy? I don't think they should because, you know, um, this guy's a bona fide superstar. So if he, if he figures this thing out, it's a legit threat. Everybody knows that. Everybody knows that. And so you're not going to give up on a guy that just needs some guidance, right? You need some veteran presence on that team. There, there are a bunch of young guys on that team, except for, you know, um, CJ McCollum, who's been around the block a couple times here and there. But, you know, for, to, to, for the Pelicans to give up on this guy is incredible. So now everybody's talking about what do you get for Zion Williamson? Well, his value is so low, especially considering the media attention last night. Now, if you're a team like the uh, the Knicks, you got to pounce on this situation. You got to absolutely pounce on this situation just because of the fact that if you don't, then somebody else is going to grab him. All he needs is some sort of guidance, some sort of veteran experience, some sort of veteran leadership around him, and he'll get the job done, right? He will actually lose the weight, right? Um, and, you know, get in conditioning. Once he figures it out, it's going to be a dangerous thing. Like Shaq says, once he figures this whole thing out and, you know, wants the ball, has the energy... It's going to be dangerous. But the question is, when is he going to figure it out? Right? The the Pelicans window is still pretty early. Right? Um, last night was a horrible performance, but it's only one game. Right? I remember the previous game, they pay, played phenomenal. Ingram played phenomenal. CJ McCollum played phenomenal. But not so much Zion. So you got to focus on Zion if he can get the job done, if he can cut his weight, and, you know, we'll go from there. But at the end of the day, do you trade Zion Williamson is what I'm proposing as a question to you guys. If you're the Pelicans, if you are David Griffin, are you entertaining any offers for Zion Williamson? Right now, I don't think they can because all the ne negative media attention that's circulating Zion Williams for right now for his weight, his energy, his lackluster um, performance, especially last night and this season, considering that he's only had two double-doubles this entire season, that's not going to cut it. I agree, that's not going to cut it. Um, he needs a little bit more work. He's still young, right? Like, you know... 
If he was about 27, 28, then I'd be a bit concerned. But I think he's, what, 22, 23? He just needs some guidance. He just needs some, like, leadership on what to do kind of thing. He just got to get a little bit mature, right? He just got to get a little bit mature. And, you know, if he cuts his weight, if he, if he does all the right things, it's going to be a very dangerous team. Another thing, uh, another thing what Malika Andrews, I was kind of shocked about this. Malika Andrews talked about with Adam Silver was Josh Giddy. I was not expecting this. So Malika Andrews asked a Adam Silver, the commissioner, she asked him, how come Josh Giddy has not been suspended? And Adam Silver basically said this, we cannot suspend someone based on allegations, based on a criminal investigation. So that's why the, the league is stepping out of the way because of an uh, ongoing investigation. And, you know, that's all that basically they said. It wasn't that much of a, a conversation, but they did bring it up. They did bring it up. Malika did bring it up. Adam Silver did talk about it, that they cannot suspend a guy based on allegations. It's an ongoing investigation. They're going to see what's going on. Newport Police is going to see what's going on. Obviously, they got that lawyer now, Gloria Allred, I think it is. Famous lawyer. Could she want a settlement for her client? I forget her name, but we'll see. We have no idea what's going to happen. Um... You know, I keep up to date on this situation. I'll bring it to you guys when it transpires. But for the time being, they did bring it up in the show today. And they did say it's an ongoing investigation. And they cannot really suspend somebody based on allegations. So that's about it for Josh Giddy. Again, back to the original question. You know... Do you trade Zion Williamson? Do you trade Zion Williamson now or do you develop him more? Get him, surround him with good people. Surround with him with good people, you know, like a, a better supporting cast to get him into shape, to get him the, 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 the presence that he needs. Do you trade him now or... Do you wait and figure it out? Leave a comment in the comment section. That one and the fact that Josh Giddy is not suspended because based on allegation. What are you guys' thoughts on that? Leave a comment in the comment section. Again, happy Friday. This is Jag from Jaggy Sports.